My name is Shani Dyer and I'm the CEO of Arx Australia. Arx is a not-for-profit organisation founded on the educational needs of individual and professionals working in the highly regulated development of innovative products in healthcare. Our role at Arx has been to provide industry-led, case study-driven professional development. More recently though, we've seen the need to advocate on issues related to the operations of clinical research in Australia. Our members span the full depth and breadth of the sector, and therefore we can get a very unique and clear understanding of the issues. We work with our members and key stakeholders to achieve the understanding and therefore provide a neutral, unbiased view of the sector. So to ensure that we get this balanced view, we work a number of ways. We run forums, summits, surveys, uh, interest area discussions. We've found that these mechanisms give us what we are known for, a neutral, unbiased view, and the one that gets to the core of the issues. In the summit that we ran in November this year, we focused on clinical research. Clinical trials in Australia is seen to be an important economic growth area and a great way for Australians to access innovative, cutting-edge technologies that save lives. Well, I think there's a lot of work and there's a lot of focus on clinical trials in Australia, which is great. I think the stars are really aligning um, and there's an enormous um, evidence that uh, there's a will to improve the systems over here, which is, again, very good. Um, I don't think there's one single thing that will be the panacea for clinical trials, unfortunately. I think there are a number of stars that have to align before we can truly say we've embedded clinical trials in the best way we can uh, into the health system, for example. Um, proportionate regulation and governance is often talked about, and I think today is very much about that. You know, how can we do things quicker, faster and easier? ARX's vision is to bring together a vibrant and engaged membership, adding value to the healthcare sector. For us, this means transforming people's lives through access to new drugs, devices and therapies that would otherwise be out of reach. So at the end of the day, our members are working to build a better healthcare sector for patients through innovation and their professionalism. However, what we're hearing from them is that the system they work in is anything but efficient. There are too many inconsistencies, too much unnecessary bureaucracy, hurdles that shouldn't be there. We need to be able to work together to solve these issues. So ARCS convened a steering committee of representatives from the CROs. So what we're hearing from the sector is that there are significant pain points, including things such as interjurisdictional differences, particularly around ethics and governance systems and processes, poor patient recruitment, lack of consistency or uniformed approach to the systems from multiple stakeholders, affecting the time and effort to start up studies. There's also a shortage of skilled and experienced staff, particularly felt by CROs. It's a couple of sort of top priorities for me. Um, definitely the regulatory governance ethics process across the jurisdictions is a real pain point, not only for CROs, farmers, but certainly for the sites uh, are sort of across the sector involved in clinical trials. Another top priority and pain point is the talent pool, um, you know, at pharma, CRO, to, to really service our clinical trials. The impact in terms of the differences in the governance and ethics across the jurisdictions is complexity and confusion, you know, really um, across the sector and a lot more training and development that's required for the people that have to actually put in these, these governance uh, forms. And in terms of the talent pool, it means that um, in our sector, the CRO sector, we are all and, and, and with pharma, we're all fighting for, you know, the tight market of, of highly skilled professionals to join our organisation. I think the major constraints in running trials in Australia is sticking to traditional mindsets and not opening up new opportunities for collaboration and cooperation with uh, partners and other, uh, other industries and groups. Breaking down some of the barriers between institutions, I think. Um, it, it means that sometimes the similar research is, is being conducted in, in, in silos and um, duplication of effort when in fact we have, we have many experts that really should be talking 
um, together, whether it's in public, private, university, um, even um, private competitors and public competitors. But they, we, they should all be talking. The uh, increased popularity of Australia as a place to do early phase clinical research has um, placed a constraint on qualified uh, uh, employees to deliver the, um, the services needed for changing um, and modifying clinical research in the early phase. And there is also uh, a lack of awareness in the patient and uh, healthy volunteer population of the value of being involved in clinical research. The impact of not having qualified um, clinical research scientists available to, to perform the work um, is felt in all aspects of trial design, in um, ease of recruitment, and in speed and um, practicality of delivering the trial data in a usable form that, such that it can be adopted by the regulators down the track. So I think at this stage, the biggest constraint we have in the industry is regarding our CRA resourcing. Um, we've got some fantastic junior talent, but given the type of trials that we've got coming into Australia, we're really desperate for some senior and experienced uh, CRA talent in, in, within Australia. The impact of this is our ability to, to deliver to our customers. Um, this has a downstream effect in that it impacts our ability to start up our studies quickly and ultimately that has a potential impact on our patients and our, on our participants and their ability to receive potentially life-saving or life-changing treatments. I think this issue has actually got worse over the last 12 months. Uh, we've seen a lot more clinical trial activity coming into Australia and that's just adding further strain into the competitive market for, for CRA resource. So I think this issue is actually becoming a lot, a lot worse. But all of these issues could be solved if there was a desire to collaborate and to put the patient at the centre of our decision making. Research in Australia is not always seen through a national lens and the implementation of state-based systems add levels of inefficiency and ties up resources which could be better focused on delivering innovative treatments to patients. It's a great industry to be in, so um, you know, reaching out to universities, being creative about um, just showing people how they can impact our, our sector, I think is, is really key to bringing, bringing more people in. We ran a survey last year asking industry members what were the issues that were affecting them. This year the survey was expanded beyond CROs and we found that in many cases the constraints and pain points persisting in many cases have gotten worse. So it's really important that we have those um, people involved in the trial um, execution that understand the ultimate delivery of the data needs to be usable by regulators and by the, the people evaluating the medicine for approval. Um, it has worsened over the last 12 months and we're finding that the demand that's increased on our, on our services, um, we need to have more qualified people to perform those studies to the timelines that our clients are expecting. So that, that, has been, that has worsened over the last 12 months, the availability of that qualified talent pool. ARCS has made a significant contribution towards addressing one of the issues through an MTP Connect grant. It has 14 consortium members. The grant has enabled us to draw in university STEM graduates, screen them, train them, mentor them, and place them in internships. The Criteria program has been a resounding success. We've trained over 40 students and are busy placing them in good jobs. But we need to do more. But it shows that a little initiative can make a difference. We'll keep at it, and we're looking to expand the program to other areas as needed. And of course, there's the annual conference. We're holding the conference this year at the ICC in Sydney on the 6th to the 8th of August this year. It's a great venue, uh, we're very excited. I think it'll be our best, and that's saying something.